guys, Valashore, an independent lab that analyzes and certifies drug products and consumer products, recently found that several sunscreens and after sun products are contaminated with benzene, a well-established human carcinogen. Keep watching, I'm gonna explain how this came about, what you need to know, and how to move forward. First of all, what is Valashore? Well, it's an independent lab that works in conjunction with its own pharmacy to batch test uh, various drug products, consumer products, uh, to analyze them and certify them so that consumers and individual patients have an independently tested and verified uh, medication, or like an over-the-counter medication. They work in conjunction with various healthcare systems like pharmacies, as well as manufacturers and distributors. So their job is basically to analyze batches of consumer products and drug products to verify that they are safe and you know quality assurance basically. Towards the end of last year, Valashore decided to add benzene to its testing protocol to test products for benzene. What is benzene? Benzene is a well-established human carcinogen and it is not safe to come in contact with it in any amount and that includes coming in contact with your skin, your eyes, your mucosal membranes. It is a well-established carcinogen. It is known to cause various cancers, including cancers of the blood. So they decided to add benzene onto their list of things that they t test for when they run these tests on drugs and over-the-counter products. The FDA uh, prohibits benzene in medications, products, what have you, with the exception of in rare situations where benzene may be necessary to produce a drug that is you know, medically necessary. And even in those rare cases, the FDA limits the amount of benzene to two parts per million. To be clear, personal care products like lotions, shampoos, conditioners, sunscreens, uh, and uh, after sun products should not have benzene in them. It is not necessary for the product and it is not safe to come in contact with. So anyways, this Valashore lab, they decided to start looking at sunscreens and after sun products and they noticed that they were getting positive readings for benzene. They've tested quite a few at this point actually. Um, and they have found many of them to be negative for benzene and perfectly fine. However, they did in fact identify benzene in 78 sunscreens and after sun products. And by after sun products, I mean things that you like put on to maybe soothe a sunburn, like certain aloe gels. They identified benzene in a handful of both sunscreens as well as after sun products. Of all of the products that they examined, 27% of them had detectable benzene. What's even more alarming is that several of them had upwards of three parts per million of benzene. So that's quite high. Remember what I said earlier, the FDA in those rare situations where benzene is necessary restricts benzene to two parts per million. So it's exceeding what would ever be allowed. And why did this happen? It seems as though it might actually be a supply chain issue. I wanna make it crystal clear to you guys. This is not, I repeat, this is not a sunscreen problem. It has nothing to do with the active ingredients in sunscreen. It has nothing to do with the inactive ingredients in sunscreens. The benzene is a contaminant. Something happened in the supply chain. It has nothing to do with any one particular brand or one particular type of sunscreen product. It's not unique to sprays, it's not unique to lotions, it's not unique to creams, it's not unique to physical sunscreens or chemical sunscreens. It seems as though there is some issue going on in the supply chain where benzene somehow is making an appearance. It is a contaminant. In the description box, I'm going to provide you all with a link to the Valashore documents. They have, there are three documents that you need to look at. One document lists all the sunscreens that tested positive for benzene. The second document, which is equally important to look at, is the products that tested negative. The third document tells you how to dispose of a product that has benzene in it because it is a hazard to human health. 
I honestly don't understand why they chose to focus on sunscreens and after sun products and exclude other types of products because the public is going to perceive this as a sunscreen issue. But in reality, if this is a supply chain issue, it could be affecting other types of products as well, like body creams, body washes, shampoos, conditioners, face creams, you name it. If this is a supply chain issue, it could be affecting really any type of product. I'm not saying that to alarm you and to evoke fear and panic, but I want you guys to understand that they focused on testing sunscreens and after sun products, not all products. But if it is an issue with the supply chain as their findings suggest, well then that is worrisome that it could also be impacting other products. It also is probably a batch to batch problem. For example, if there is a problem somewhere along the supply chain, given batches are going to be impacted by that supply chain issue and be affected, whereas other batches are probably more than fine. Valashore is urging the FDA to investigate this and for manufacturers to investigate their products and recall any obviously that are found to have benzene in them. Again, this is not a sunscreen specific issue. Sunscreen is important for not only protecting you against a sunburn, which is very destructive to the health of your skin, but also for protecting against skin cancers. The FDA looks, views benzene as a no-go with the exception of those rare situations where it is needed to produce a medically necessary drug. And in that situation, they limit the amount to two parts per million. What's alarming in this situation is that many of the products that tested positive for benzene exceeded the two parts per million limit um, that the FDA requires. The other thing that is alarming and is unique to sunscreen is that you're going to be actually exposing yourself to large volumes of that product. You wanna put it on ideally at two milligrams per centimeter square in order for it to work, and you're going to be reapplying it. Whereas if this were an issue with a shampoo that you washed your hair with and rinsed off, less exposure. That doesn't mean benzene and shampoo is safe, but you see what I'm getting at here. It's likely to be even more of a problematic issue, people using a product and reapplying it multiple times a day, as you should be. So the FDA really needs to set a maximum daily exposure limit as well, because even if it were in the amounts of the allowable amounts, then you would be exposing yourself to a lot on a daily basis, especially a day outside where you're supposed to be reapplying sunscreen. So that is another issue that needs the FDA needs to address. Balashore also identified prior to this uh, benzene contamination in hand sanitizers. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the medications metformin or Zantac, but Valashor actually was responsible for identifying uh, a contamination issue with those medications. They were contaminated with a probable carcinogen, NDMA. So this can happen, I'm, I'm pointing out these cases here to you guys of these medications that were contaminated with a probable carcinogen, because obviously this is something that can happen in supply chains. So having an independent laboratory like Valashore that tests uh, medications and consumer products is obviously really valuable. They tested a lot of products, but they didn't test every single product on the market. Now, when you look at these documents, don't get misled into thinking that this is a brand specific issue because you will notice they only test, they can't test every single brand and every single product out there. So what's gonna appear on these lists are those that they tested. And if you just look at the list of products that tested positive and you don't look at the list of products that tested negative, you may assume that certain brands should be avoided. And that's not the case. You know, I don't wanna put this out there to evoke fear in you guys whatsoever. I just wanna bring it to your attention that there appears to be an issue in the manufacturing supply chain that has led to some batch to batch contamination of products with benzene. It's analogous to when 
We identify that if a food or a product has been contaminated with a pathogen. Spinach gets contaminated with E. coli somewhere along the line. They recall it, you know, they get it all straightened out. So to reiterate, this is not a sunscreen problem. This is not a brand problem. This is, is not unique to chemical versus um, physical sunscreens. It has nothing to do with the actual active sunscreens. It has nothing to do with sprays versus lotions versus creams. I mean, you will find an example of each of these on both lists. So I want you guys to look at both lists to appreciate the fact that clearly somewhere along the chain, there was contamination that affected things in Apache distribution. Um, you know, whether or not it has something to do, you know, you could just sit here and, and theorize for days. Maybe it has something to do with, uh, you know, the coating in the tubes that are used in certain products or the lining, who knows? It's alarming, especially the fact that it exceeded the FDA's allowed two parts per million uh, known carcinogen. And to be clear, there's no reason to have benzene in sunscreens. It's not necessary for manufacturing. Uh, if it were, then we wouldn't have so many benzene negative sunscreen products. If a product does not appear on either list, there's no way for you to know if it has benzene in it. You can't know that by looking at the ingredient list because it's a contaminant and you can't you know, figure that out yourself. You don't have, you know, laser vision to tell that benzene is present. You're not like, you know, a, your own mass spec. <laughs> Hopefully they will be testing more products, more batches to clarify this issue or, you know, and or hopefully the different manufacturers come together and sort out exactly what this supply chain thing has, what exactly has happened here so that those products can be removed from the market, the issue can be corrected, and then those things can be fixed. Check the link in the description box. It will take you to an article that you can read about this, kind of saying exactly what I've said here. There's also a video interview with the Valishore CEO who explains this in detail. Um, that you can watch. And there are those three documents. The first document is going to be the listing of sunscreens and after sun products, which were found to have benzene in them of the products that they tested. The second document is a list of sunscreens and after sun products, which were found to have no benzene in them. And again, of everything that they tested. And then the third document is how to dispose of your products if they are on the benzene positive list. But there's nothing that you can do if your product does not appear on either list, there's nothing that you can do to analyze if it has benzene in it or not. Um, if you would feel more comfortable, then I would suggest sticking to the list of benzene negative sunscreens in the meantime. But to reiterate, this is not a sunscreen specific issue. Um, they're just what was tested, sunscreen and after sun products like aloe gel, you know, those kind of cooling gels and things, which are not sunscreen. Um, so obviously it's not a sunscreen specific issue. I wanted to make this video not to stress you guys out or make you guys, you know, worried, but to just draw to your attention that there is a contamination issue with some sunscreens on the market and to provide you with a list of those that have been found to be contaminated and those that have been found not to be contaminated. But again, not everything on the market has been tested. Um, I've also gotten some questions. What about in the UK? What about in Canada? What about in Japan? What about in Korea? This has only been done on, in the US on American sunscreens. So all I can give you guys is the information that I have. If new information comes to light, I will do my best to update you in a timely manner. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I got a lot of requests to talk about this. Obviously I would have talked about it anyways without the request because it is alarming that a carcinogen has made its way into personal care products and sunscreen. Um, and it is worrisome. And I really do hope that moving forward, uh, the FDA cracks down on this, that brands come together, manufacturers to identify what the issue is so that we are not inadvertently exposed to an established carcinogen. But as a reminder, ultraviolet radiation is an established carcinogen. It does cause skin cancer. You still need to be wearing sunscreen to protect your skin from that carcinogen. And 
That second document will give you a list of benzene-free sunscreens. And again, I don't know how many times I can say this. It is not a sunscreen issue. It is a supply chain issue. So you still need to wear sunscreen. You shouldn't abandon it. It's not a brand specific issue or a sunscreen form specific issue. It's not you know, unique to sprays. It's not unique to chemical sunscreens. I know everybody likes to worry about those because you know, mineral sunscreens appear on both lists as well. So um, I hope this was helpful and just kind of clarifying what's going on. Maybe it allays your fears about sunscreens and please continue to protect your skin from the sun, wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen as well as sun protective clothing while you are out enjoying the outdoors. Um, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.